I have cysts all over my back, all over my chest, and now even my shoulders. Guys, it got to the point where I couldn't train. I couldn't push. Ooh, that's rough, dude. This is literally bleeding on camera. So guys, Derek, moreplacemore8.com. Today we're gonna to be reacting to first steroid cycle, how it ruined my body. This is really bad ruined. You see a before and after here. And it looks like some pretty rough cystic acne. Um, all right, let's uh, get into it. Okay. What is up guys, Zan Carver here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. We're gonna be on here a lot more often, so stay tuned. And I'm gonna be explaining to you guys today why I haven't been on YouTube for the last six months, what happened to me, what seriously went wrong, how I could have avoided it, and hopefully help some of you guys along the way. But today, it's Saturday. Uh, we're gonna get a nice little arm workout in today. And then tonight I'm going into the city for a birthday, so you know, we gotta fill up some sleeves today. But we're gonna run a quick errand, get to the gym, and then we're gonna chat about what happened with me, what seriously went wrong, and how y'all can avoid it if you're in the same scenario. Squeeze this in real tight real quick. All right, now I'm gonna sit my ass down. So we're gonna chat real quick about basically what happened to me over a, what I would call one year span up to this point. But it was truly three absolutely nauseating months of my life that I feel I should probably come clean about. Let you guys know what happened, what I went through, and hopefully I can help some of you guys. So I'm gonna tell the story through some pictures that I have on my phone. Here is the start. It's March 13th, I'm a bit chunky. I'm trying to get a little bit of weight off of me, but still put on some size. You can see a visible six pack. Like, obviously, by layman person standards, this is quite good. So, um, anyway, this is like shit lighting, too. Like, this is, you know, chunky by who, <laughs> by some fucked up fitness industry perspective standard, I guess. But at this point, I'm starting my first cycle of testosterone. I've been on TRT for a year, or no, more like eight months at this point, And I decided to go on my first cycle. As you swipe through, I'm starting to get a little bit leaner. Abs are coming out. My body's starting to take shape. Uh, love handle's going away slowly. But you might notice there's a bit of acne popping up. About July, I start to see acne on my face, my neck, um, a little bit on my back. Nothing that I hadn't experienced before. Now, here's the thing. I experienced acne all through middle school and high school. I always had acne. It was a huge insecurity for me. I had it in, into college. I had it after college. I'll put a picture here of what my face looks like the year after I graduated. So that's a typical, I don't know, red flag in my opinion that is often a some foreshadowing for how you're going to respond to androgens because individuals, when they get on gear, the likelihood is high that whatever you are experiencing is going to be exacerbated. So if you have existing androgenic alopecia, it's probably going to get worse when you go on a blast of test. If you have acne when you're natural, you go on a blast of tests, it's probably going to get much worse. Like these are things that I would say if they even exist at your natural like homeostatic baseline, you can expect like at best they don't get worse, but the likelihood is high. They're going to be like double, tripled potentially in like severity at least. Um, my face is entirely just like acne for no reason. It just, it was entirely frustrating. So it's not something I've never experienced before. Um, and I say that to this point that maybe this is something I should have saw coming. If you, if you do the timeline and understanding that if I started mid-March, now it's mid-July, I've been on for four months. Um, I'm looking pretty decent, right? But 16 weeks of using a compound longer than expected, I should expect to see some side effects. My blood work looked good. My body was changing. I felt really good. So I kind of ignored it to be honest. 400 milligrams a week. So basically I was going every other day. My blood work actually looked good. To be honest, if you look at my blood work, all my blood work looked good. There was nothing bad, but. So pinning every other day, that's, you know, pretty fucking frequent. You're not gonna get a whole lot more stable going every day. You know, it might help. Some people do find a difference from that. And for somebody who has acne propensity, you know, getting as stable of hormone serum concentrations as possible is very, very prudent in my opinion for avoiding um, like the worst acne breakouts you get are actually during hormonal fluctuations. There's a reason why when you are clearing hormones into your system, and you do a post cycle therapy. If you're not cruising and you're actually cycling off, like usually the worst acne is when you're coming off. Like as paradoxical as that sounds, when hormones are crashing and it's getting out of your system, you're getting on these fertility drugs, you end up with an extra like brutal breakout. And that is the hormonal fluctuations are quite problematic and attenuating that when you are exposing yourself to hormones um, is a very, very prudent strategy in my opinion. And now again, speaking of, you know, propensity and, you know, red flags ahead of use and whatnot, we've seen some pretty bad acne cases on this channel. Like this is, uh, if you type acne on my channel, you'll see severe acne from steroid use. How to avoid this? This one was like a really, really 
Like this guy looked like he had a fucking volcano like pour over his chest. This guy prone to acne took anabolics and this is what happens. And he also cut his nipples off in Mexico. Yes, this was a fucked up one, dude. And really, really bad. This was my experience with Accutane. This guy also had a really bad cystic acne experience. Like, I don't even know what kind of acne you call this. is like fucking volcanic ash again. Um, and, and this guy was pretty clean beforehand. So this was like a harder one to predict. And this guy got really fucked up. But again, if you literally have acne that's already bothersome before you take anabolics, short of Accutane, like it's very difficult to manage this shit often. So you need to be mindful of that. And oftentimes that could be a entire deterrent for an individual from touching the shit to begin with because it could despite the fact that it you know improves your physique you might not even want to take off your shirt after you get that physique because your acne is so fucking rough that's not uncommon but you'll see here my skin really was starting to uh get bad on my back things are starting to uh kind of surface my body best it ever looked be honest like this is the leanest with the most muscle i've had about 185 pounds best i've ever looked and i was pretty proud of it but it was hard to be proud of taking my shirt off when my skin looked like this and there you go. And I wasn't really understanding why. It's really stupid to look back and realize that I wasn't understanding that my hormones were so high. And it's obviously the reason why my skin is acting up. And I, I basically ignored it. You know, I've had acne in the past. I'm, I'm sweating a ton. There's, you know, there's got to be reasons why. Yeah, like ultimately, regardless of what you think should happen, if you're doing like proper on cycle, you know, skin hygiene, you're, you know, changing your fucking sheets, your pillowcases, you're doing everything that you should be doing um you're pinning every day your diet is on point at the end of the day if you are on 400 migs of test like this is very super physiological not representative of normal function whatsoever so even if you're doing everything 100 percent correctly like it's not out of the question for you to end up with side effects like this so you have to be mindful of that just because you do everything perfectly and by the book doesn't mean you're going to avoid hair loss doesn't mean you're going to avoid acne doesn't mean you're going to avoid testicular atrophy, like a fucking guaranteed outcome, essentially. Like all of these things are essential, like very basic side effects that are very expected and oftentimes are going to be um, severe in individuals and go overlooked entirely. Because for some reason people think if they just like, like there are ways to attenuate your risk of shit, of course, but when it comes to certain things that, that are exacerbated by genetic predispositions, some guys can run grams of shit and get not one pimple. And there are other individuals who literally like sniff a fucking vial and they end not like literally, but they cannot handle shit. And that's just the way it is, you know, and oftentimes those individuals either take Accutane and fucking nuke it or they're going to be dealing with it. And that's the reality of the situation. And again, Accutane, not a harmless drug, very liver toxic, very problematic, may have some interesting like post finasteride like side effects too in terms of, you know, after you like complete its use and you have some like perpetual fucking, you know, long lasting side effects to some extent, not common at all, but it's been heard of. And it's, there are anecdotes of people who've had long lasting issues above and beyond the fact that sebum production is like permanently inhibited to a point that you end up with perpetually dry skin, which is like ultimately why you're using the shit to begin with. And that's how you're avoiding the acne in the future. But these are all things to be mindful of. Other than the fact that I am using testosterone at a level elevated from what my doctor has prescribed, trying to get the most anabolic benefits from it. This is where it's starting to get better. So here, I'm showing you guys this picture. It's on the screen. This, you guys can see, I have terrible cystic acne starting to shoot up my neck, my back. It's even on my chest and it's painful. It, it hurt to touch. I could feel it. I could feel it, like the blood pressure on it, the pressure against my skin. I could feel the tightness on my skin. When I trained, when I explained to you, it was the most painful thing I was experiencing. And I'll continue to go scrolling through here, August into September. You, you notice my skin has just absolutely changed. The texture has changed. I have cysts all over my back, all over my chest, and now even my shoulders. Guys, it got to the point where I couldn't train. I couldn't push. Oh, that's fucking rough, dude. This is literally bleeding on camera. Against a, ben a bench, I couldn't put a barbell on my back. I remember I was training my friend Nick Megan and the bar was on my back and I was bursting, I was bleeding. And it, it's disgusting, it really is, but beyond being disgusting, it was painful because I could feel everything on my back just pinching. I actually, I'll show you guys here, I went and had a, a back facial and the esthetician who was working on me basically said this is the worst she's ever seen and she can't use a tool to open them up. So she's just squeezing them, hoping that they'll find their way through a pore. But because the skin was so thick, the, there was no way that the pus would find its way through. So. Jesus fuck, dude. Like, that is... Like, it's not the worst we've seen, of course. Like, we've had some fucking brutality cases here. Like, just devastating goddamn fucking landscapes of volcanic goddamn... I don't even know how to describe it. Like, that's how bad it is. But this is 
again, like obviously the ROI on anabolic exposure is like not fucking there. If you end up with this, it's completely paradoxical to try to enhance your physique when you end up making it so you want to show it even less than when you were fucking natural. So she was just squeezing my skin and squeezing the cysts and I was crying into the bed and it was so painful. So some of the worst things I experienced were laying in bed was probably beyond training was the most painful part of my day because laying on my bed meant I was bleeding and sticking into the sheets or my shirt. So I would be wearing you know, just a shirt I didn't care about and I was ready to throw away as soon as it was good to go. Um, but I bled into shirts, I bled into sheets, I got stuck to them in the middle of the night. I woke up, I got up like I was Frankenstein because I just didn't want to touch anything and I just, I got stuck to everything and everything just ripped when I woke up. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd be bleeding. Some of the shittiest stuff I've ever dealt with. So when I would go to train, I would wear two shirts and a sweatshirt. And sometimes I would bleed through all three. I avoided movements where there was contact with my back. And you don't really realize how many people touch you on the shoulder or dap you up and slap your back when you don't have this. But when you do, you notice everybody. And the amount of people that I accidentally shoved because they tried to do that to me, I actually felt bad. You know, I was very defensive. I didn't want anybody to touch me. I wore big baggy sweatshirts. I put a hood up and a hat on. I ignored people. I had my headphones in. I heard people talking to me and I ignored them because I just truly wanted nothing to do with anybody. Um, and it was, it's not me. That's not who I am. I'm about as social as it gets. I talk to everybody in the room. It was, it, it affected my mental health a ton. It's something that's tough for me to talk about. And I, I've spoken to a lot of people about it and that's helped me a lot, but it was easily one of the hardest times in my life. So beyond sleep, beyond training, I couldn't wear shirts that I cared about because I was bleeding into everything. I ended up having to buy a pack of white shirts or black undershirts and wear those underneath the shirts I actually cared about. And thank God I worked from home because I didn't have to wear button downs and go into New York City. But had I had to, I'd be bleeding through everything. Now the reason this happened, guys, looking back at all these pictures and understanding my story, I was negligent to the fact that this, people have taken testosterone for decades. I have acne prone skin and this is something I shouldn't have ignored. It was stupid of me to take it for as long as I did and ignore the side effects ignore what was going on with my body. Now, in October, it got to a boiling point where I knew I had to do something, so I went to a dermatologist, I got an Accutane prescription, we did blood work and made sure I was healthy enough to do it. Um, I obviously brought my testosterone down, went back to my normal TRT. Um, you know, the things I did to remedy my skin used benzoyl peroxide. If you're suffering from any type of acne um, and you have oily skin, panoxyl, 4% is a little bit lighter, but 10% is probably good for chest, shoulders, and back because it's a little bit stronger concentration for thicker skin. I also used charcoal soap bars. Those are actually super helpful because they're, they're very drying. As long as they don't have flavor smells in them, you really don't want them textured. You want them to just be smooth charcoal. And one of the things I found the most impactful for my acne before I took Accutane was tanning and melanotan, unfortunately, which is not not, not something I recommend because, you know, you're aging your skin prematurely just to, you know, get darker as well as like dry out your acne essentially. Like there is definitely a very impactful effect of UV exposure on acne and how it like settles down. I don't know if it dries it out or exactly what happens, but I guess it makes you think too. It's like, damn, if this is like nuking, if this is like drying the shit out of my acne or like whatever it is that's happening that's getting rid of it, like what's happening to my actual healthy skin <laughs> and is it aging at like how expedited of a fucking rate so definitely not just a band-aid that is not a long-term solution whatsoever and for some people there is no long-term solution other than a shit like more drugs and more stress on your body essentially through things like accutane i'll link down below an amazon one that i, I bought that i found to help a lot and i still use now um just to continue to clean out my skin where i'm at now is i'm still taking accutane i have been for uh, just about four months now. It's helped a ton. You guys obviously saw my skin in the training videos earlier. To some degree, my skin is pretty bad looking. It's tough to look at for me sometimes, um, but it's far in comparison away from where I used to be. So it actually makes me happy. I went through the toughest time in my life where I experienced an insurmountable amount of regret, embarrassment, frustration, pain, loss of self-worth, all of those things for months. Uh, I hid it from my work. I hid it from people I see every day. I hid it from uh, family members. I hid it from a lot of people because I was embarrassed. Now I'm just about as happy as I've been in a very, very long time. And it's actually allowed me to have a different perspective on what I'm doing right now. Helping you guys provide content, show you guys what I go through and how I'm coming back. This is the start of my story, truly. Where I went, relearn who I am. You know, because who I am, if I'm not a bodybuilder, I at least love fitness. I love to train. I love to work out. I love to talk to people. I love to help people. And that's really all I really want to do. Yeah, so like ultimately as well with this side effect, this is something that even though you might come off of the shit that is causing the issue, it may be permanent in that there is some permanent disfigurement of your skin. Like acne scarring is a real thing. Just like androgenic alopecia, it's very difficult to reverse it. You know, you can get back some ground, but ultimately getting back to baseline 
or you know getting back to a state where you were happy with it when you were like pretty far gone like it's a lot easier to be proactive and avoid things getting messed up than it is to make back ground both in skin both in hair both in organ stress too like again there's only so much your body can tolerate of this shit and some of the stuff unfortunately in a very acute and condensed quick time frame can get to a point where it is like a permanent issue you're then dealing with forever like if you have been on one steroid cycle and it fucks you up like these guys do you think these guys are going to ever have perfect skin again like probably not you know like sure they might it'll improve a lot you know when they stop what they're doing if they take Accutane, like whatever it is that they've deemed appropriate. Um, but there's going to be, you know, some level of like damage that is occurred that you cannot get away from. Like I've seen some individuals that had really bad cystic acne on their faces that now like to this day, even as adults, they have like craters in their skin essentially um, from where the acne once was. So this is stuff to be mindful of too, because it comes up fucking quick and fast. If you don't know you're prone to it, like, this guy here, he has like a fucking sad face in the thumbnail too. Like it was, he took it rough, bro. This was a really bad one. He had like immaculate skin beforehand. And a lot of the times, like these hormones, they build up in your system too. Where you have, you have long esters building up over weeks and weeks. And the clearance time is not something that's instant. So you have to be like very fucking careful. This is again, another reason why starting at the minimum effective dose and titrating up accordingly is so prudent you know when people are like oh run 500 tests like it's all you gotta fucking do there's a reason why maybe like this guy he did not have the worst issues on his trt and i don't know what the details are of his trt or why he was on trt to begin with um i don't think i might have skipped that part in the video but anyways at the end of the day like he was tolerating the trt and then when he got on 400 megs of test all of a sudden things got really fucking bad. And that's not a high dose by any means. Like that's a lower than a beginner cycle for a lot of people, you know? So again, there's a reason why, like this is a long game. You have a long time to build muscle, gain performance, be mindful of the long-term accrual of tissue is not a short, is not a short, you know, condensed time frame kind of thing. If this is something you're gonna be doing long-term, you probably shouldn't be yo-yoing the fuck out of your endocrine system by cycling on, cycling off, PCTing and fucking crashing your system, trying to recover only to blast again immediately after recovering what looks to be normal gonadotropin output on your blood work. Like that sort of thing is a horrible way to go about this long-term regimen like because ultimately bodybuilding this is like a long-term thing most guys who are blasting are going to end up blasting again and this sort of thing you know will not creep up as much as it will just fucking onslaught you if you were not careful about the way you titrate things if you started a more reasonable dose minimum effective dose that's super physiological to actually make progress and then you assess your response via gynecomastia do you all of a sudden have like titty development you know do you have disproportionate amounts of estrogen receptor you know expression in the fucking breast tissue maybe you're an individual who's not a hyper responder from an acne perspective but maybe you're a hyper responder from a gyno perspective you know you would probably want to know beforehand if you're going to be getting a titty and then you don't want to have to blast yourself with aromatase inhibitors just to handle a moderate like mediocre ass dose of testosterone necessarily maybe you could have you know otherwise use a concurrent dht derivative that is otherwise going to be more useful for I don't know, inhibiting estrogen-induced RNA transcription. You can then have a more reasonable, well-designed cycle at a more moderate dose that's still performance-enhancing without having to go a realm or a tangent of fucking drug use that is just basically trying to band-aid yourself as you accumulate side effects. The ideal scenario, in my opinion, is to start the minimum effective dose and titrate up on a needs basis as well. Like this guy, again, like 400 tests, there's nothing really that wrong with it. It's just clear that the dis the disparity between his TRT and 400 somewhere in there was a bit too fucking much for him. So maybe if he, you know, titrated up slower instead of just jumping to it immediately, you know, he could have been able to avoid some of the severity of it and got in front of it sooner. You know, it's definitely something to be said about that from a gyno standpoint, hair loss standpoint, blood pressure modulation standpoint, fucking everything standpoint. These things are things that will just, you know, creep up on you, but like insidiously butt fuck you if you're not careful. So again, like responsible hormone use needs to be respected. Like when you're using this shit, the compounds need to be respected, what they can do to you, even from a baseline state that seemingly has no issues. Um, you gotta be very fucking careful about this stuff. Cause again, 
There's no reason you couldn't eventually get up to 400, 500, 600, 700 total anabolic exposure if you need it based on your goals, based on if you're like, what sport are you in? Are you a bodybuilder? Are you somebody who's actually like doing this for athletic endeavors? Do you even need this fucking dose? Or you're going to manage the side effects, you know, you'd probably know if you're escalating in a responsible manner. Because again, most people who use this shit are going to be using it so long term that like, why would you not have taken the slow and steady, like tapered approach up to the max exposure that you actually need? It just makes sense to me. So again, there's nothing really inherently wrong necessarily, but what he did, I just think he could have done things a bit more responsibly and more carefully. And I'm sure he wishes in hindsight that he didn't jump up right to 400 and maybe didn't even do it to begin with. So um, let's hear what else he has to say. And for months I closed myself off from people because of what I suffered through. And now I can truly appreciate being in the gym, working out with people, teaching people about fitness, helping people reach their goals and hopefully reaching my own. That's truly really what I've learned from this experience is to appreciate being in the gym, appreciate having skin that isn't covered in cysts and appreciate having the health and the ability to do the things that I do and do the things that I love every single day. So, you know, if you guys can learn one thing from this is that your hormones are nothing to play with. Anything that you put into your body is entirely going to be represented on the out, whether that be food, whether that be drugs, whether that be liquids, you know, if you're drinking, you're smoking, you're eating shitty foods, or you're taking any type of drug, at some point, it's gonna reflect on the outside. So rather than experiencing yourself, just learn from my mistake. Guys, whatever you're putting in your body, it matters. So take pride in what you do, take control of your body, and make sure that you are getting the proper guidance, somebody to lead you along the way. My advice to you guys is that whatever you are looking to pursue in life, make sure you get an expert to help you, and do not take it lightly. Guys, I hope you learned from this. I hope this was helpful for somebody, and if it Okay, so, you know, good overall message. Kudos to this guy for being so transparent and putting out there, like, him at his worst, too. You know, even having the confidence and the courage to put out these pictures when you're at your most insecure. Um, and potentially making yourself look stupid, too. Like, people are afraid to say they fucked up oftentimes because it makes it look like you were irresponsible or you're just, like, incapable. You shouldn't have been using the shit to begin with because you didn't do your research or whatever. Like there is definitely something to be said about the fact that he went out and made this video and kept it up too, even as it popped off, you know? This is uh, 361,000 views. There's nothing to scoff at for a 3,000 subscriber channel. Like that's fucking huge, dude. This one was hard to make. This was my struggle and I look forward to showing you guys the journey back to a healthier and better version of me. So you can check out his stuff, uh, Zach, Zan Carver Fit on YouTube. Great video, dude. And um, definitely highlights you know, the risks of this stuff that sometimes go overlooked. You know, people see bodybuilders dying in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and that's the result of like cumulative use over time and sometimes irresponsible use, lack of, you know, ancillary medications or monitoring of blood pressure, organ, you know, durability through, you know, imaging and whatnot. But there are side effects that creep up way faster. And sometimes this stuff might actually be a blessing in disguise, as fucked up as that sounds. Because if you end up with, you know, brutal acne that prevents you from blasting the shit out of yourself, if you had no visual cosmetic side effects that deterred you from using this stuff, there's essentially nothing to stop you from blasting your face off until you end up with some level of health deterioration that makes you want to stop. And that's often the case is either a cosmetic issue or a health issue that makes people really like take, take their foot off the gas. And sometimes it actually is a blessing in disguise to end up with the cosmetic one because you would otherwise be one of the guys who pushes yourself to the limit for 20 years without doing any organ imaging or any of the shit otherwise. And then you end up with a heart attack at 40 years old or something, you know? So again, like obviously, that's not to say that you couldn't do this in a relatively responsible manner and minimize the risk and hopefully not be one of those individuals who dies early. But how many people are actually, like at least this shit, you can see the manifestation of it in real time, like literally in your fucking mirror and it makes you notice versus with your organs, you know, do you see your rejection fraction deteriorating over time? Do you see your blood pressure other than when you're actually putting on a cuff that you hopefully own by now? and is in your fucking house to test regularly and literally check your blood pressure and see a, you know, 140 over 90 or fucking worse reading. You have a resting heart rate of 90 plus. Like these are things that, you know, are more insidious and will fuck you on the back end years down the line. But these things, the cosmetic issues, they crop up quick and are very blatant calls to action. And sometimes I think those could be the most educational tools, you know? Sometimes it's not just a bodybuilder passing away early, it's also stuff like this that makes you really think about it hard about if this is something you should be doing. So anyways, um, good video by Zan 
Um, hopefully I said that right. Zan, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. And, uh, you know, be mindful of the risks of the shit. And uh, if you do do it, do it responsibly. Be careful. Do your research first. And uh, make sure everything's dialed in. Because, again, you only have so many years in the tank of organ exposure before you end up with either the cosmetic issues that make you stop or the actual health issues that make you stop. And when you're actually exposing yourself to this shit, you want to make sure you're actually making the most of it. Like I've done a video before. It was the number one piece of advice I could give you if you're going to take steroids. And essentially it boiled down to making the most of your blast because you only have so many blasts in the tank. If this is something you're going to be doing regardless, you know, there are many individuals that will use this as a band-aid for their shitty diet, for their shitty training, for their shitty sleep. And doing those things, you are essentially shortchanging yourself on those periods of life condensation. Like you were literally taking years off your life while you're doing it, probably, to some extent, whether it's, you know, significant or not. And you need to make the most of those because one day you will not be in a position where you can just blast your face off and keep making like insane amounts of progress not only from a, you know, like gains acquisition accrual perspective, if that was even a grammatically correct way to say it, but again, like you're not gonna be able to pack on the muscle you could when you were younger and healthier and more tolerable of the drugs. And in addition to that, one day you will just not be able to use this kind of shit to begin with because it's gonna be too unhealthy to do so. And you will have wished that every time you did exposure, you actually made the most of it. So that would be my advice is don't even do this shit if you're not gonna maximize the risk you're imposing upon yourself too. So... Anyways, hopefully you guys learned something from that, found it informative, insightful. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoreace.com. Check out uh, Zan Carver's channel, like I said. And yeah, you know, subscribe, like, comment, helps the algorithm, much appreciated. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoreace, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, my preventative medicine hormone replacement therapy platform. If you are an individual on hormone replacement or you're looking to assess your hormonal state and optimize it, um, not from just a hormone intervention standpoint, but from a natural intervention standpoint too. We are one of the few clinics who will actually look at your diagnostics and determine natural ways to maximize your quality of life, vitality, and even things as basic as macro and micronutrient intake go overlooked when it comes to how impactful it is on your testosterone synthesis, your sleep hygiene, how impactful is that on your testosterone production? These are things that go overlooked and sometimes people go into clinics with like fucked up lifestyles, like horrible environmental factors imposed upon themselves, terrible micronutrient deficient diets, calorie depriving themselves, overworking themselves, cranking themselves with stimulants, and they're never getting into a state of rest and digest or getting high quality sleep. And they end up with like hypercortisolemia and micronutrient deficiencies. And then they think they need TRT and maybe they just fucking don't. These are things that it would be prudent to evaluate in thorough detail before you just haphazardly jump on hormones thinking that you need them just because you had a transient, you know, fucking 200 nanogram per deciliter total testosterone reading one time and you feel like shit. Maybe there are other things you could be doing to get yourself to a healthy high T state or more optimized state than you are currently in before you jump on exogenous hormones for the rest of your life. And if you are on exogenous hormones, no judgment. You know, we have high quality doctors who will monitor you and give suggestions on how to manage things, how to, you know, things is, you know, overlooked as injection frequency. People are oftentimes advised to inject like once every week, once every other week. Some of the most nonsensical shit you've heard of is still commonplace and having doctors in place that know how to reduce the aromatization that occurs after a shot by having a more frequent administration schedule to reduce the burden of androgens influxing into your system at one time. You know, a super physiological spike in test also equals a super physiological spike in estradiol aromatization in a condensed time frame when you could otherwise have it more spaced out in a more frequent basis with micro administration to then try and replicate what you would actually endogenously produce if you were a natural high functioning male to begin with naturally, as opposed to, you know, high functioning through exogenous hormone support, blasting yourself a test once every two weeks. That is not ideal. Like, there are so many things that it would be prudent and very, very um, like the importance of it cannot be overstated in my opinion, having a high quality medical doctor on your team, on your side, overseeing your care and uh, making sure you're dialing everything in, even if it's from a natural standpoint, a supplementation standpoint, overseeing your lab work standpoint. And then also from a hormone standpoint, if you are gonna be using hormones, like it's so important you have somebody overlooking things that are going to be mindful of cardiovascular disease risk, um, cancer, you know, so much shit that is uh, scary and it is definitely comforting to have somebody on your side who actually understands how to evaluate it in a thorough and actual educated way to be honest. So anyways, you can check that out. 
I would not overstate the importance of that enough. I talk about it very in depth because I'm very passionate about it. And I think it's critical that you have somebody who is looking to educate you and keep you informed on your state of health on a continuous basis and work with you for your personal goals and endeavors. So check that out as well. Anything else that supports me is all in the video description below, including my recommended diet model for getting muscle and sports performance whilst being mindful of micronutrient density, something I mentioned earlier as far as how important that is for testosterone production, other downstream cascades, including uh, literal like mental clarity, you know, mental health, neurology, et cetera. It's not just about testosterone production. There are a shit ton of things in the body that are supported by micronutrients that go overlooked too from guys who just think it's about if it fits your macros and hit your fucking protein every day. Not the case, especially if you're natural. And anything else that supports me, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.